take three celebrities, send them off to a remote house in the country, then seal them in. With no computers, TVs, newspapers or mobile phones, they'll be completely cut off from the outside world. So how will they know what's been going on while they've been in the bubble? Good evening, I'm David Mitchell and welcome to The Bubble. The show where we ask three celebrities to spend the week completely cut off from the outside world. No newspapers, no TV, no internet, nothing. So they won't know what Gordon Brown learnt this week. That it is possible for a Labour Party leader to get positive headlines from the Sun, the Mail and the Telegraph, but only if you die. <laughs> Before we return them to the bosom of their indifferent families, we're going to show them a selection of news reports. Some of them are genuine, some of them have been faked. But will they be able to tell the difference? So let's meet tonight's guests. Straight from the bubble, please welcome Andy Hamilton, Sarah Millican and Clive Anderson. <laughs> Hello, good evening and welcome. How are you all? We're fine, aren't we? We've had a very yeah, jolly yeah. time. Thank you very much. H have you? Yes. And, and you've really been totally cut off from the news media? Completely. Yes. Absolutely. Is there anything you, you'd like to have happened while you've been away? I was hoping that things might have moved on and be a bit more sort of futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, hoverboards and silver yeah. outfits and tablets instead of meals and that, but it doesn't... Right. Not that I've seen so far, it doesn't seem to have happened. Right. Mm -hmm. It probably has, marginally. <laughs> but was it like Narnia for you, then, this has? It seems like you've been away for... We were just in a wardrobe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been some sort of odd headlines that we missed, like you know, Chelsea player found in bed with his own wife, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> MP pays for his own second house, you know. Yeah. Nothing like that? Well, I, I, I can't tell you. No, you of know, course the, not. No, I, that would ruin the programme. And, Andy, your, your experience of the bubble has been brought forward a week, hasn't it, because of... Um, yeah. The unfortunate falling down of stairs of, of poor Sue Perkins. Which I had nothing to do with, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you inflected that was... No, no, I mean, absolutely not. No, we're um, just sorry that it didn't happen in the house, cos it made a great television, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I didn't realise it wasn't Sue Perkins for a couple of days, so it was... Uh, <laughs> I thought... She, she, that, she's, she's not looking quite as good as she used to. No, no disrespect to Andy, but... Uh, That's a definitely yeah. an yeah. ungallant remark. Okay. <laughs> We should say that Sue is fine and does not look like Andy Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> um, and will be on next week instead. Uh, anyway, let us begin. I'm about to show you a selection of news stories, TV reports, headlines and newspaper articles from recent days. All you have to do is decide which are the real stories and which are the fakes. What could be simpler than that? So let's start with some TV news stories. You're going to see three news reports, but only one of them is real and has been broadcast while you were inside the bubble. The other two are fakes. Can you spot the real story? Let's have a look at story A. A small village shop in the heart of the Yorkshire countryside with a difference. Every Monday, owners Brian and Rachel get naked to raise money for the local hospice. Now they've been warned to keep their clothes on or face legal action for breaching health and safety rules. But when the man from the local council came round, he told us we couldn't do it for health and safety reasons, we were shocked. I said it's, a, it's an easy way of raising money for the local charity. Locals have mixed feelings about Mooney Mondays, as it has now become known. I think it's disgusting. It's so unhygienic. I think it's fantastic. It's raising money for charity. And if anybody's got a problem with that, then don't come in on a Monday. Brian and Rachel have vowed to appeal and plan to carry on until a final decision is reached. So, for the next few weeks at least, it'll still be Dress Right Down Monday in Cawthorn. It would be good if it were true, because it would be a great achievement for the small shopkeeper, if I may call him that, to have something <laughs> that the, that the uh, you know, that, you know, Tesco's and Sainsbury's haven't got in on yet. You'd like to see sort of mass nudism in large branches of Waitrose. Well, I do think it's like that... A, <laughs> I'd like to think that a shop has done something that the, the, the big... the multiples, the chains, haven't done yet. Yeah. What well, are the implications yeah. for a car, though, though? If... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will the delivery men be naked? Because I'm not sure that that would be yeah. a good move. Well... <laughs> That we're yeah. Nudity it, online. Well, I think that exists. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> <yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> Normally the pizza delivery boy has his clothes on when he arrives at the door and then takes it off three minutes in. So I'm told. I've heard about right. these things. Are you talking about pornography or experience of life? <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. Uh, <laughs> but, but I remember you from 20 years ago. Don't you uh, worry. 20 years ago, I, <clears throat> I wasn't legal. Um, <laughs> now, um, I, I got myself off, if that's the right expression. <laughs> <laughs> it's only this broadcastable, by the way. Oh, yeah, no, this is all innuendo. We haven't said the word fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. uh, let's have a look at story B. <laughs> when a fox enters a chicken coop, he usually leaves with a full stomach. But the fox, which braved the home of Dude the Cockerel and his friends, didn't get to leave at all. The chickens, it seems, hatched a plot to murder the intruder, his hen-pecked body found in the morning by the bird's stunned owner. When I went round to the other side to check for eggs, um, saw the fox laying dead on the floor in the chicken house. So all the doors and the flaps were shut, so I don't know how he got in, whether he pushed the flap up and then it had slammed down behind him, but I just didn't know what to think. It seems this remarkable show of poultry power may have had more to do with luck than design. It appears a table in the coop was knocked over, hitting the fox on the head and knocking him out. But the chickens still showed plenty of pluck, attacking the unconscious animal with their sharp beaks, leaving a corpse too gruesome to show on television. Oh, come um, on. Obviously, the story was covered with far less levity on Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's brilliant, because that's like a really unusual episode of Midsummer Murders. <laughs> <laughs> they could have found a dead fox and then filmed it, couldn't they? Who? who? The, the people who, who put together this report. Can you tell that we're all a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see a dead fox at the end? <laughs> <laughs> it was building up so nicely and I'm yeah. really good at that. It stopped. <laughs> yeah. But it is showing it's the effect of the Lincolnshire air. It makes people <laughs> want to kill foxes. <laughs> is there a chance that the fox committed suicide? <laughs> Have we looked into that as a possibility? Or no. No. <laughs> or the fox died of natural causes and the chickens have been fitted up. So you're saying that's a reverse Quincy? Yeah. Right. That's a reverse, reverse Quincy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In Quincy, it's yeah. always, oh, he's just... Oh. He's killed himself or it's natural causes, and Quincy goes, no, it's murder. No, I remember when you delivered pizza all those years ago, you offered me a reverse Quincy, and I didn't know then. <laughs> What that was. <laughs> Will you never let me escape my past? <laughs> um, all right, well, let's have a look at report C. <clears throat> Has he or hasn't he? It's the question all of Westminster wants answered. Rumours that began on the internet suggest David Cameron had a spray tan before his speech to the Tory conference on Sunday. They don't hand. General election Mr Cameron certainly seemed to have a healthy glow as he delivered his speech, and pictures of his appearance over the past few months seem to raise questions about his ever-changing complexion. The tanning salon he allegedly visited wouldn't be drawn on the matter. Male grooming has become more and more popular over the years. I would say about 40% of uh, our clients are male for spray tans. But it is a private matter, and I'm not going to discuss who or who hasn't been in recently. Taiwanese news, though, haven't been so coy. This reconstruction shows what the man who wants to be Prime Minister might have got up to. With image being so important in modern politics, it appears that being brown in Westminster is suddenly not so bad, after all. Well, um, that's, that's Cameron thinking, how can I get a real tan on my face when the sun shines out of my ass? <laughs> <laughs> Andy, do you, do you believe that potential future PM could be so vain? Oh, yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, I would have thought that would be quite expensive to mock up. They did one with Brown, didn't they? Uh, Gordon was... Brown. Yes. And mocked yes. him up for being angry. And stuff <laughs> like uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? A sp uh, is a spraying on of colour, or is it a sort of sun, you know, uh, sun ray lamp? I think it's a spraying on, spraying of, on colour, of colour, as, yes. as the Taiwanese yeah. have demonstrated. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, unless that's unless that's supposed to be a blowtorch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think the time has come to vote. So let's just quickly recap. Is it A? Shopkeepers banned from holding naked Mondays. B. Chickens murder a fox. 
or C, David Cameron had a spray tan. So which is the real story? Please vote A, B or C now. Oh, oh, what? fantastic. You've all gone for different ones. Oh, great. Yes, oh, great. Uh, Clive, you've gone for David Cameron had a spray tan. Sarah, the shopkeeper's banned from Naked Mondays. And Andy, the chicken's murdering the fox. Well, I have to say that B is the right one. So Yay. well done, Andy. Well done. <laughs> Uh, yes, four chickens have indeed murdered a fox in cold blood. It's not in cold blood. It's self-defence. I'm going to get the chickens off the trial if it's... Uh, right. You know, if a fox comes into your chicken coop, it's, it's kill or be killed, isn't it? That's... Ah, but I put it to you that the fox had just entered of his own free will just to have a look around. Look, <laughs> look at the number of previous convictions the fox had for killing... <laughs> You're not allowed to bring heads. those in at this stage, yes, surely. You can. Of course you can. I think we can see why Clive left the law. <laughs> I think we do, actually, even though it wasn't on the news, we do have a picture of the fox. There it is. Yeah, it's not that horrific. Oh. It's only horrific if there are foxes watching, isn't it? Can't you do a thing like yeah. the football results? If you're a fox, <laughs> look away now. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I've, I've never watched the football results and I'm amazed to hear that they have that. If you don't want to know the results, why are you watching the football results? <laughs> <laughs> you should be the judge. You're so perfect at not knowing anything about the modern world. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard of football. I just, yeah, yeah. just wish it would stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Clive, you went for the Cameron spray tan. I was uh, fooled by for the reason that Andy gave that uh, mocking it up in Taiwan. It was clearly based on the fact that that had been done for a previous story. So, okay, obviously, perhaps you did do this. You, your, your programme got in touch and got them to do that. Yes, we did. We rang up the people yeah. in Taiwan and we, we commissioned our yes. own. Animation. So we, no, sent you. We spared on this program. No, absolutely. Absolutely. We bought your vote. Yes. I'm, very, <laughs> I'm very pleased with that. Well, I hope the license fee pays. <laughs> I think that was worth it. <laughs> oh, God. Not <laughs> them again. Yeah. They're never happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, at the end of that round, Andy gets a point. <laughs> very good. Next, we move on to the newspapers. Three stories, and again, only one of them genuinely featured in a newspaper while you were inside the bubble. The other two are fakes. Can you tell the difference? Here's story A. The shock news that a photograph sent back by a Mars probe shows a giant gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> which, which newspaper's that? I'll give you a clue. It wasn't the Financial Times. Yeah. <laughs> the sport and the Sunday sport used to do headlines yeah. like this years ago, and they had a... They had a thing once when they, they said a, a London bus was found on the moon and everyone said, this is rubbish, this can't be right. And then the next week they wrote a story, London bus disappears from moon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks like the gorilla's got a bikini on. It's not much of a stretch, is it? Not yeah. only... Gorillas on Mars! <laughs> Where, oh, the fact that they wear bikinis hasn't made, <laughs> hasn't made the universe we... that much odder. <laughs> Tell him what your obsession is. One of your... Oh, one of my obsessions is animals in clothes. So, <laughs> it's not an obsession. You <laughs> <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> how many? How many pictures have you got of them in this? Got a few. Sure, don't judge me. You drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. I like animals in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's move on and have a look at story B. This is the news that Prince Philip was caught short <laughs> while out walking on Monday and was spotted relieving himself behind a tree. <laughs> the headline, the royal we, has been used over many, many years with anything vaguely connecting the royal family and, uh, you know, lose or urination or anything. So that's certainly a plausible headline. Mm. Um, how, do, how do they know he's weeing? He could, yeah, be, he could, be, he could be looking down at a dead fox saying, oh, who, who killed this? There's only some yeah. chickens here. But, uh, <laughs> isn't the Duke of Edinburgh entitled to wee on, on a, beside a tree? Is there some sort of... I think it's, it's a territorial legal, thing it? that he does, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. OK, well, let's have a look okay. at the last story, story C, which uh, is the news that the pre-election leadership debate televised by the BBC will be hosted by Fern Britton. All oh, right. It's, it's a funny idea because she did ask a very good question of uh, Tony Blair uh, about the Iraq war and had him sort of saying, uh, uh, well, of course, if there hadn't been any weapons of mass destruction, we'd have had, had to find other reasons. I mean, we would have argued the case <laughs> in a, a different way. Uh, but I wonder if you're just building on that and to mm. uh, trap us. So what's looking more plausible of the three? A photo shows a gorilla on Mars, <laughs> Prince Philip snapped relieving himself behind a tree, or BBC's pre-election debate to be hosted by Fern Britton? Oh, so, it's difficult. It's difficult. Can we just go we... back to that nice house? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, 
<laughs> when we're in there, we felt like calves or animals in a factory farm. We're being fed and looked after. We knew there's something horrible coming at the end of it. <laughs> Artificially inseminated, yeah. that wasn't... I didn't like that then. <laughs> I didn't Artificial? That How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the time has come to vote. Yes. Is it A, photo shows a gorilla on Mars, B, Prince Philip Snap relieving himself behind a tree, or C, BBC's pre-election debate to be hosted by Fern Britain? Please vote A, B or C now. <laughs> All right. Well, Andy's gone for A, the photo of the gorilla, and the other two of you have gone with Prince Philip pissing. <laughs> well, I have to say, Andy, once again, oh, you're right. Andy, oh, you're a genius. <laughs> It was indeed the sun and only the sun that yeah. printed that particular news report. Um, if, in case you're feeling at all sceptical about it, uh, let me quote from the article. Could this be a giant silverback gorilla on Mars? <laughs> the next line, no. Some <laughs> space buffs reckon it is. <laughs> After seeing this picture sent back by a robot vehicle probing the rocky red planet for signs of life. It continues... Enthusiast Nigel Cooper, who has studied thousands of photos taken by NASA rovers and posted online, said, It's definitely a creature of some sort. <laughs> Mr Cooper, 43, of Grimsby, Lincolnshire, added, I'm convinced there is life out there. <laughs> what, in Grimsby? <laughs> I have now quoted the entire article. <laughs> That looks as though... Now we're looking at it again. Mm. There's a track, isn't there, that this, well, presumably the rover has... Why didn't it take a photograph when it was right up against the gorilla? <laughs> I think the gorilla heard the noise of the trundling buggy and only emerged subsequently, so yeah. that when, when the buggy was where the gorilla is, the gorilla yeah. wasn't there. The gorilla went, oh, hang on. Again, Not much been going on round here for a few thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> and none of you went for Firm Britain as the new... Uh, no, that was an obvious fake. Come on. Yes, what has come out this week is the details of the three debates. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be one on the BBC, one on ITV and one on Sky. There's a lot of competition between the broadcasters, so uh, how come Channel 4 won? Um, uh, uh, no commercial breaks. Uh, it's not a stipulation. ITV and Sky just said they, they wouldn't be able to sell any advertising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and audiences not allowed to boo or applaud. I think right. they put the second one in to make the politicians feel better about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to be uh, chairing the debate? The so they're going to be chaired by... Break it to me gently, cos I did put my application in to all three. <laughs> but, uh... David Dimbleby is doing the BBC <laughs> one, right. Alistair Stewart the ITV one, and Adam Bolton the, the oh. Sky one. Um, and they're going to be 90 minutes long each. Oh, wow. That's as long as a football match, isn't it? You don't even get any half-time. This is going to be ridiculous. By saying it's as long as a football match, you've made it seem even longer. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. Oh, the football matches are so long. Ah, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I have tried, you see. I've watched them. Have you? Yeah, yes. like during the World Cup when it's supposed to be important. Oh, will England beat Colombia? Yes. Oh, the big clash. Those yeah. two rival nations. Where's Colombia? I don't know. I thought it was a coffee. <laughs> So you don't like football or geography? Or you're, you're, yeah. too... <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I don't like football or geography. <laughs> I hated geography. <laughs> Nobody knows what geography is. What is it? Capital cities or is it Oxbow Lakes? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's, not, it's just some other things you might be interested in. Yes. Yeah. It's a stupid subject. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, at the end of that round, Andy gets another point. Oh, well done, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you, you've all been living together all week in a, in a house. Um, what, was, what was it like? Did you have a nice time? The food was really good in the it house. Was. And I'm, I'm kind of all about microwavable dinners normally. Um, <laughs> so, I have got a lot closer to my target weight, which is good, which is just massive. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe last week in the house they played a lot of Scrabble, but I believe that this week Clive... Taught, Clive taught us to play some bridge. Which yeah, have he a look begged at me. Here. He begged me to yeah. teach them. Well, <laughs> let's have a look at that. <laughs> All righty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh dear. That's 
most un... mischievously edited, yes, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I, I did a little I better think, than yeah. that. I think Andy, well, went, then... Andy went from not knowing anything about it, not being interested, but in five minutes he got the idea and was really competitive about it and was, yeah. was trying to win the demonstration hand where we all knew what the cards <laughs> were. And, a and as you can see, he's very good. And apparently you don't even shout bridge at any point, which is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, now, uh, moving on, it's time for a round-up of some more news that you've missed while you were in the bubble. Story A. Café in Devon recycles tea bags for a half-price cup of tea. We've always recycled everything in the restaurant, and we decided to take it a little step further. It gives a very, very nice, mellow, rounded flavour. Story B. Surface of 2012 Olympic velodrome track to be made from recycled cardboard. The tracks are much stronger, but also just as conducive to low tyre resistance as the conventional beams of wood. And story C. Scientists in Bath develop a new way of identifying people using their noses. Noses are hard to conceal without attracting suspicion, so if someone's got their nose covered up by their hand or, or clothing, uh, they immediately stand out for the crowd. So in all the surveillance footage, it's very common that people's noses are visible. <laughs> and uh, I, I'd like to thank Sir Trevor MacDonald for the loan of his bong. Um, now, <laughs> I just saw three stories there, but only one genuinely featured on TV news reports while you were inside the bubble. The other two were fakes. I'm getting my head around finally this, this whole programme. Yeah. They're all unlikely, these stories, aren't they? They're all impossible. Well, we, what we try to avoid yeah. is yeah. having, like, yes. man goes mad with jelly, yeah. and then <laughs> interest rates remain stable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> And you've certainly yes. got me completely <laughs> yeah. flummoxed yeah. now. My confidence is shot, so I yeah. think they're all true now because ev right. everything's equally plausible. So why shouldn't you recycle tea bags? You can, you can certainly get more than one cup out of yeah. tea yeah. if you I want to. I people have done that at home for years. Would people find it disgusting, maybe, though, using someone's... Someone else's know. tea? Well, no, it's yeah. only been in... It has only been in that cup, hasn't it? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm imagining. <laughs> How do you drink tea? <laughs> tea bagging's two different things. Um, yeah. Just yeah. so you know. And the velodrome? What is a velodrome normally made out of? Is it, is it cardboard? Is it wood? Is it plastic? Velo. I Velo. see. <laughs> uh, is the velodrome outdoors or indoors, Andy? You know about this sort of thing. I'm assuming David doesn't know what sport is played well, in the velodrome. No, so, I, let me just say, I don't dislike sport, I dislike football. Oh, right, OK. Right. Yeah. Um, so what is the velodrome normally made out of, uh, David, in well, your I, experience I, look, of following I've, cycling look, as, I've only uh, designed, as you do? I've, I've only designed a few stadia, but I believe... <laughs> <laughs> I believe the velodrome is indoors. I'm assuming that some treatment is done to the recycled cardboard other yes. than just sort of gaffer taping it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming round to it. Now you said gaffer tape and cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> My image of the 2012 Olympics is exactly yeah. that. I think the time has come to vote. Yeah. Is it A, tea bags used twice for half price tea, B, velodrome surface made from cardboard, or C, noses to be used as a new form of identification? Please vote A, B, or C now. I'm just voting randomly now. I'm never right, so... <laughs> I feel I need to somehow resurrect your morale, <laughs> Ty. I'm but unfortunately, shocked. it's not going to happen now oh, because no. you're wrong. <laughs> uh, you and Andy are both wrong. You've gone for the uh, B, the velodrome. Yes. Uh, Sarah, you've gone for A, the tea bags, and you're wrong. Oh. It's C, noses to be used oh, as a new form of identification. Oh. <laughs> no, yes, no. noses may eventually replace pin numbers at cash point machines using a new system <laughs> called chip and pick. <laughs> and, uh, what about plastic surgery? Some people have their noses altered. Um, this this yeah, does well, not matter? Well, I think, I, th I think you can... I mean, with iris recognition, that can be tricked by putting drops in that make your yeah. pupils dilate and that really? sort of thing. All of these systems are trickable. This is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. All those officious people who stop you at airports, they're going to have a field day with this. Yes. Because you just go through again and lead with your nose a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that means at the end of that round, I keep all the points. Hey. All right. Yeah. So, OK, our final round is on the buzzer. I'll read you some news stories from the last week that may or may not be real. If you're the first to buzz, please answer real or fake. If you're right, you win a point. If you're wrong, you lose a point. And I can tell you it's very close, but, Andy, you're in the lead. So, let's begin with... A toy firm has come up with a new device that will allow dogs to post messages on Twitter. Uh, that must be fake. 
It's real. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst interviewing a woman fleeing violence in the Congo, a UK immigration officer is alleged to have sung Umbongo, Umbongo, <laughs> they kill them in the Congo. <laughs> Sarah. Real. That's real, yes. <laughs> The Home Secretary has reduced the UK terror alert level to relaxed. Uh, that's <laughs> fake. That is fake. What's yeah. my first point? Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Alexander the Meerkat from the Compare the Market adverts is to present the weather on Channel 5. Uh, Sarah. Fake. That is fake. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, Channel 5 will do yeah, it yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's a market yeah, for yeah. it. Listen. <laughs> US Air Traffic Control Authorities are investigating claims that planes at New York's JFK Airport were directed by a child. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Real. Real. <laughs> <laughs> a cosmetic surgery <laughs> clinic has offered to remove Eamon Holmes' man boobs free of charge. <laughs> Real. That's fake. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Loach's latest film to go into production is Family Misfortunes and is based around the life and times of Les Dennis. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please be real. Yeah. That's fake. It is fake, yes. Oh. Yeah. And finally, Stephen Hawking has checked into a sex addiction clinic. <laughs> real. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> so the winner is Andy. Oh, well, <laughs> Let's, let's have a look at what you got wrong in the quickfire round. Um, Clive, you didn't believe the toy firm had come up with a new device that allowed dogs to post messages on Twitter. Well, how would they do that? Would they go woof, 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 and it's... Uh, rec I mean, dogs don't say much. I wonder whether the dogs will realise what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. In the same way that people buy, like, Christmas presents for their dogs, I don't think the dog knows it's Christmas. No. I don't think many dogs are Christian. <laughs> St. Bernard's are. <laughs> <laughs> about greyhounds. Do you think greyhounds know that it's a race? No. The greyhounds don't know that it isn't a hare. <laughs> Sarah, you believed that Stephen Hawking has checked into a sex addiction clinic. Yeah. Did they come to him instead? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what yeah. happens in a sex clinic? Uh, it's either, oh, what just a sexy. festival thing. You mean a sex clinic or a sex addiction clinic? Sex, I sex, well, either, either, either one. A sex addiction clinic. What, what happens? How do they wean you off it? What, Isn't it you... just um, just something people say? I don't think there are any mm. sex addict clinics. Are there? If people say I'm addicted to sex, I, they, they basically I've behaved very badly and I wish to in some way medicalise it. I'm addicted to being an asshole at parties. <laughs> I've got to go to a being an asshole at parties addiction clinic. <laughs> no, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I think there are asshole clinics, so I'm, no. I'm sure there are. <laughs> You'd be such a sympathetic counsellor in this <laughs> circumstance. The thing is, though, I would be a sympathetic counsellor, because yeah. under those circumstances, the arsehole I was talking to would be paying me. <laughs> paying through his arsehole? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <right>. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, on that note, uh, <laughs> thank you to my guests, Andy Hamilton, Sarah Millican and Clive Anderson. Join me next time when coming out of the bubble will be Marcus Brigstock, Sue Perkins, Julia Hartley Brewer and the Reverend Ian Paisley. Although I may have made one of those up. <laughs> Good night. Well, she may not be too good on stairs, but before she enters the bubble next week, Sue Perkins is taking up another challenge for BBC Two. Monday at nine, she's putting together a band for Britain. The details are coming your way next. <laughs>